what we know as men is women like a good looking guy. Now, is that every single woman on the planet? No. No, no, no. However, one way that we can tell that women like a good looking guy is if you think of it like this. Hey y'all, it's your girl Nadia. Hey, and it's me, Coach T. And we are two average people. Yes, we are. Um, so we're gonna talk about um, something that we don't really have <laughs> experience with, but mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about it just from you know, just kind of wanting, really wanting to hear from you guys, but also just bringing up the topic because it's such a, a common thing that's discussed. Um, and like I said, we have an experience in our relationship. Well, no, better not. It's like, <laughs> I gotta give him a little, I gotta give him a little help, <laughs> but y'all, so it is infidelity. Yeah. I'm sure all of you either know someone, um, or have been around someone or have friends, family that have experienced infidelity, unfortunately. You experience it yourself. Um, and so... They say it like affairs don't happen out of the blue unless you're dealing with someone who's not monogamous um, and is pretending to be. Um, but I wonder how how true is that? Do you really think, babe, that when people get married, right, they intend on being monogamous their whole marriage? Here's what I think. I think we have people who are ill-intentioned. I don't want to talk about them because that answer is clear. Uh -huh. Okay? If if you're Rico Suave and you're just used to just slanging it and then you get married, there's nothing stopping from believing that you're just going to keep slanging it. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So it is what it is. But I want to talk about those people who we all understand are well-intentioned who still find themselves in this position. People who go into it thinking that that's not what I want. And then as it turns out, that's exactly that's where that you found it. yourself. You know? Well, I mean, I feel like it's talked about all the time. But most recently <coughs> with Nia Long and her, yeah, yeah, her husband, uh, her I, fian I don't even think they yeah, were married. That's they true. were like they fiance. Were married, they were like engaged for a long time he or got something. Up in a silly part. I mean, it was just it was silly. Uh, I mean, he jeopardized his job, his, his livelihood. And, you know, was even after the league found out, you know, still had his wife out there looking for houses. And it, it was weird, man. It was, you could tell that's just a guy who found himself in a very weird predicament and was just wildly reckless. But it happens. It happens. On, on, the, on, on the high levels, on the low levels, it happens everywhere. So let's examine. Let's talk I about mean, it. I mean, I, I know a lot of people, a lot of men would say he must be crazy as hell <laughs> to cheat I mean, on me along i like, mean i mean what? i mean and it, you know yeah since we're on the topic there's something he always says all the time is you know and no offense to celebrities or you know people in high places that are actually truly happily married and monogamous choosing to be monogamous but he always <laughs> will say you know celebrities those kind of people they may not want to be married they probably shouldn't get married it's not that they shouldn't necessarily get married but i don't understand why people expect the traditional life from a person who's living uh, that way okay i, I really don't i yeah, don't get it sense. it doesn't make sense to me because it's at the end of the day, they're experiencing a whole different world than the rest of us. I mean, I can't imagine. I'm, I don't want to pull up anybody's name because right? that's it. You know, that's not the point. But I can't imagine being like an athlete at the top of my game and walking around in different cities across the the, the country and the world sometimes, knowing women are throwing themselves at me constantly. <laughs> It, like, I I don't know how you can walk into a relationship with a person like that and expect this the fairy tale. I re I don't understand it. Well, I think they expect it because that's what they were told they were gonna get, or that's what the discussion was. I yeah no I don't, <laughs> I don't know I don't I doubt there was many discussions. I think people just uh, people have an expectation of how marriage looks, and that's okay. 
I feel like the fairy tale is what is most important in some cases. And that's not a man woman thing. I think we both go through exactly that same thing. So I think it's just the fairy tale that becomes the most important part. And that's what takes over. And so oh. you end up dealing with the avatar of the fairy tale in your mind sitting next to you and you're just happy that that's the case missing all sorts of red flags that are just going off left and right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you know that was more important in the moment and then it comes crashing down in the form of cheating i, I mean and, and I, cheating I on either side I, yeah i mean i can't disagree i think um i think you're right i think it's hard to to deny that but you know i can't imagine that uh, uh, you have the athlete on one side, but I can't imagine that a celebrity would just jump into a relationship. They're going to be very choosy, especially women. You know, not that men aren't choosy, but we're very choosy. We're, we're kind of naturally very selective. And so we're going to be very choosy on who we're with because just like you would, an athlete would have many women throwing themselves at him. A, a celebrity, a woman celebrity would have many men at her door as well. Uh, what She's I, not just going to pick up anybody. That's true. She's going to really try to see, okay, can I actually build a life with this person? I think, though, there's a, there's a slight difference in that I've also heard, because, you know, I'm in the entertainment space as well, um, and I've heard a lot of women in the space say, you know, the ones who are the, the stars of the show, say that actually men don't approach. Who? So they end up dealing with, like, the men that they want don't approach because they just assume it's never going to happen. Mm. There's an untouchableness that happens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the guys who do approach are the ones who are bold enough to do it. But then you have to ask yourself, are those the ones you really want to approach? Because they ain't approaching with nothing that's for your benefit. Right. That's, just, <laughs> right. that's their realities. But that's the only, those are the only ones who are, who are making, the, making the move. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think there's an extra layer of experience there that we probably just don't experience. Well, I mean, we right, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm sure there is. I'm not. We're not gonna act like we know, but right, right. Know, just I don't you know, know. You hear it, and you're like, hmm. This is information. Yeah, I, I, I can see how a, a woman might have that experience, and how that might mess with her. Yeah, over time. Yeah. So I read an article the other day. Um, we'll post we'll, that article in the description down below. Yeah, and it says, in the olden days, older days olden days <laughs> men were more likely to cheat than women whereas in the current generation men and women are cheating at similar rates and the reasons are similar hmm i believe that you believe that i believe that why do you believe that i believe that wholeheartedly i well one i believe that because um in today's day and age with social media being the main format that people meet and I say that to mean everything from Instagram to OkCupid to Plenty of Fish to all of any social media platform where people can connect, even Messenger counts. You know, that being the, the focus point, we're really only able to ascertain the very superficial of, of, of a, the superficial aspects of a relationship. And whether we like to admit it or not, sex is kind of a superficial aspect of a relationship. It doesn't mean it's not powerful, but in today's day and age, it's so ubiquitous. It's kind of just like, all right, well, it's it's devalued over time. How about that? It's thinking supply and demand. There's so much more supply to match the demand. The cost of it is pretty low. Well, that's probably part of the reason. Well, why? Well, you know, infidelity is so high right now, and not to say that people only cheat because of sex. But because it's been so devalued over time, it's been devalued. It's not as important. It's to, not as important to, not, to, to hold out and to be restrained. Mm -mm. This <laughs> is passed down at a, as a societal norm, and so you you know you enter into a relationship, and you know the physical is always so heavy in the beginning of any relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to just go for to it, just go for it, focus each on other. It. And, but as life happens and you get married and you have children, you have all those things, you know, it, it's easy for it really to be devalued then because it's like, 
<laughs> I'm just busy. I got, yeah, I got, I got stuff to do. Stuff I'm to working. Do. I'm raising kids. I, you know, I'm maintaining a house. I'm running a business. You know, you're doing a lot at the same time. And that's so, true. to your point, where I agree with you, I think that's that could be why. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I I like to take my energy and put it back into my my relationship. I like to put that energy back into my wife. And I like to try to get that energy back. And if I'm not getting that energy back, I like to try to do something to get that energy back. And I try to be active in this direction. And I, I think we kind of create that that infinity symbol because we keep putting energy back into each other. So it's in, it's infinitely moving as long as we're making it move. That's kind of the key right there. But I think infidelity really happens, especially in a marriage, when you're trying to have that, but there's energy that's leaking. It's just... It's, so then it be, just becomes one-sided and one person's giving and it, it, there's just a leak or a leak on both ends. And, and the goal here is just to close up those gaps and try to make it work. But yeah, I mean, I can believe that when and women are cheating for the same reasons because of that very same thought process. Yeah. I mean, we all feel the same things and we're all approaching life from the very same place. Mm -hmm. And social media really does kind of dictate what that is but yeah it's it's so true i i mean i think for women i mean i'm <laughs> i've never cheated on my husband i'll say that out loud same, on this same. podcast same, i've same. never cheated on my husband um i guess you you know you never truly know but again it's okay that's what we're going it with is what it is. but from you know what I, I love to do a lot of reading on um relationships and um just talking to to um, friends, I feel like women cheat. There's usually an emotional um, component to cheating with women, um, where they feel emotionally starved in their relationship. Um, that can bring on some low self-esteem as well, um, and I feel like that can cause a woman to wanna to go out there mm -hmm. and be unfaithful so the reason why i'm bringing this up because that article said you know that the reasons men and women are cheating are similar but i i know for um just what i've heard and read and all of that the women usually there's an emotional um hmm. connection or emotional pull or they're not getting what they need emotionally and so they seek it out try to seek it elsewhere i can hear that i can hear that because i can think of guys who are in the same position where they are the ones in the relationship feeling either underappreciated, undervalued, or not getting that emotional need met. Um, compounded by the thought that a lot of time men just really don't communicate our, our emotions very well. You know what I'm saying? So then when, when it comes down to it, we find ourselves in these positions and don't really know what to do about mm -hmm. it. And next thing you know, the secretary is looking mighty fine for some reason. <sighs> You know what I'm saying? I could I could see how there's a one to one, but I can also see on the flip side of that coin how there's a there's another one to one. Because as a man, I can tell you that sex for us is you know if there's an opportunity for sex, just bold face sex, yeah, that it's a thought. Well, that's it, how it just is what it is, and I and I believe that for some women, it that's the case too. It's it's less to do with emotion and more to do with just physical need, like ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that looks fun. Well, and, and, and I could be I could be very wrong with this, but I feel and I or I could be thinking of, you know, back in the day. But I feel like the thought is that you guys, you know, yeah, girls looking good. You know, you don't have enough self-control. So, yeah, she looking nice. So, you know, take a little bit if I can. But women you know, there is that, okay, he makes me, he's making me feel real good by the way he's talking to me or looking at me. So, you know, this is interesting. He's stroking that emotional side that may yes. not be getting stroked in the relationship. Yes. And I do agree that, that some women are activated by that. I just also believe that, especially in today's day and age, when, when, Giving out your phone number is intrusive, but giving out your Instagram or your Snap is not only ubiquitous in the culture, 
but it's also just like a way of means of like broadcasting yourself and what it is you're looking for but, out into the world. Uh -huh. You could you could end up finding yourself, especially as a beautiful woman out here on Instagram, you're getting so much attention whether you like it or not. That it is it must be hard to not come across somebody that doesn't tickle your fancy. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do something about it, but I can tell you that most men don't have that experience. Like, that experience is completely foreign for most men. Most men. Like, if I'm a celebrity athlete, big and tall, muscular, good-looking guy, that's probably we probably share a similar experience. Uh -huh. But if I work at the post office, and I've always worked at the post office, and my daddy's daddy worked at the post office, and I'm just a regular dude... We, I've never had that experience. It's probably not happened since high school, if it happened at all. Well, I mean, you do bring up some good points. First of all, with the social media part, the access, just, just the access, pure the access. Just, I mean, now purely off the access, not having access. you haven't done anything, just right? Purely off access. We just have so much more access. To, I can I mean, I can probably get in touch with anybody that I know right now. Than I've ever known, and to some extent, right? So do you think about it like that? Then, yeah. So that's a that's a really good point. But you know, you're you're right in. I think this is where this is where where the gaps are closing in. Right. Okay. Because yeah, see, this is where the gaps are closing in. Right. To what you're saying, right. you know that um, it's. Because of social media, because of the access, because of the the um, the 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 way we're interacting with people, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I, there's no other guy that has ever been attractive, or I'm sure. you know, I'm sure for you there's and see. So we need to dismantle that. Yeah, let's altogether. just let's just don't expect that your man or woman is never ever gonna find another come on. woman or come on. man attractive. Come like. On. Come on. Come on. Come We're on. human beings, Come right? On. There's other people. Gotta, Everybody got a celebrity crush. Yeah, we got to deal Everybody, with the reality. You know? The reality. And so, there's, that is the reality. But you're right. How you act on it is what makes the difference. It's the only thing that makes the difference. I, I may see a guy, even at the gym, be like, oh, yeah, he's cute. He has a nice body. But for me, I'm not, he's, they're not him. So, I'm not, it's not going beyond, oh, yeah, he just, he's, nice on the eyes right same with him mm -hmm. you know and i'm not gonna speak for him but you know we've had these conversations so i'm not gonna act like he's not gonna find any other woman attractive or beautiful or whatever um but she ain't me so that's facts <laughs> That's facts. No, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> can be boasting out. You know, I gotta I rub it. it in a little I love bit. It. I love the energy. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, in, in, in what we find attractive along the way, right? I like your arm up there, but you don't have to oh. like, I like it. You don't to. See? <laughs> Alright, so what I'm saying is, the things that we would find attractive might be different um, men to women, but honestly, I feel like for a lot of it, it is the same. What we know as men is women like a good-looking guy. Now, is that every single woman on the planet? No. No, no, no. However, one way that we can tell that women like a good-looking guy is if you think of it like this. A, a good-looking guy and a not-good-looking guy coming up to a woman and saying the exact same thing... <laughs> Well, there's yeah. other factors that play yeah. into that. That's fair. Because if the not looking good looking guy got money, but the good looking guy broke, <laughs> maybe that might change. No, only only because that might we're, only, if, you're talk, if you're talking about relationships, yes. But if you're talking about sex, no. <laughs> relationships come with sex, yes. But we're not that's not what we're talking. We're talking about the want, the desire, the oomph behind it to say, yeah, no, I'm trying to. I'm trying to see what that feels like. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go over in that direction. That, good looking guy is just uh, pretty much hands down. Hands knock down. it out the park. <laughs> now, that's not a blame or anything. There's nothing to say about it or anything. It is what it is. Because quite frankly, people like beautiful things. Fine. Because men operate no differently. However, sex doesn't require the deeper connection. That's the hard part. Right. Sex doesn't require me to know who you are on the inside and care. You as a man. Maybe some women too. 
I know I'm, t I, I guess, definitely some women, a good number of women, a lot more women than I think we as a society give credit for. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of women out there who have to quiet themselves because if they don't, there's ostracism behind their behavior versus if I was to do the same thing mm. as a man. It's not, they, we don't have the same experience. Right, right, true. That's in that true. way. Absolutely. If we move the same way, we don't have the same experience. Yeah. Our experience is different. Yeah. And we have to be sensitive to that. So, okay. I have a question for you. I have an answer. And I know we've talked about this <laughs> off camera before, so... Well, I'm going to talk about it on camera. Okay. Do you think that we were built to be monogamous? Before I say, before you answer, mm -hmm. I know I feel like certain people, like Christians, would you know, could take offense to that question uh, because you know we we're taught, you know, <laughs> to live a certain way. You man and woman, you know, that's it, and so. I don't want there to anyone to take offense to that question because we really do need to with the divorce rates as high as they are. <laughs> we really do need to ask ourselves these talk questions. About it. We got to talk about this. Also, talk I don't want it that that this to be used an ex, as an excuse to condone cheating, right? Because it shouldn't be an excuse to condone cheating. But when we strip all of the societal aspects of this. And we get down to the root of it. My question is, were we built to be monogamous? In my opinion, absolutely not. Hmm. I don't think there is a whole lot of evidence um, on, about us physically that moves in that direction. And I don't think oh. that there's a whole <clears throat> lot about us socially that... It, when I say socially, I don't necessarily mean societally. Society says okay. yes, but socially, that's not necessarily the case. Okay, you can tell explain. that. Okay, okay. So, like, socially, what I mean is, so society versus social, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So society I'm glad says, you cleared that up. Yeah, society says, go out, get married, uh, stay true to your wife. And make sure that that's always the case. Speaking strictly from the infidelity, from the fidelity standpoint, you can tell that because when you look at any sitting president, they always look at that aspect. Is that person married? What's that marriage look like? When when Bill Clinton cheated on his wife, they impeached him. There was a reason for that because society needs to uphold a, a, a thing that we are. We need to hold ourselves higher. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, socially speaking, on a different hand. We've all seen friends of friends who not only backed up or hid um, their friends' infidelities, they helped. <laughs> We've seen it. We've seen it on TikTok. A girl would sit next to her guy friend and be like, hold on, and call his friend and say, hey, I haven't seen so-and-so tonight. Have you seen him? And the guy friend would be like, oh, uh, yeah, he's here. He's in, uh, he's in the bathroom. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Simply just because... A, they're not trying to get involved. B, they're trying to be a good friend. And, and so, so so socially, there is an aspect of it that is like, no, I get it. I, I shouldn't say out loud that I get it, but I get it. I'm going to show you that by A, how I behave, how we talk. The whole concept of locker room talk, there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. there is a community around it. There's a thought process around it that many people do subscribe to. Now, they may not say it out loud, but they do subscribe to mm -hmm. it. And I'm not here to question the good or the bad of it, only that because that's the case, we go back to the concept of access. Now, access is even more accessible. You know, now you can you can push the limits because your friends can get involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it can get pretty deep. Mm -hmm. And and that's a that's a that's a... That's a dichotomy that we don't like to really discuss a lot of the time, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's a problem. So, yeah. Well, interesting. Interesting. I can't say that I disagree with you. Um, I think, I know as women, we can be very selective, mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's cultures where women have multiple husbands. Of course, there's True. cultures where um, husbands have multiple wives, mm -hmm. you know? And so I don't know that 
Um, I think the, that question could be argued whether we were built to be monogamous. Uh, because I feel like, as you say, there's so much societal societal um, influence yeah. that you kind of just live the way that you were told to live, essentially. That's true. That's a um, level. Um, but when I look at us, when I strip us down to like homo sapiens, just human beings, <laughs> I, we could argue that all day. Like, who are we to say, no, you could only be with this person it's, or yeah. you can only be with one person or you can only be with that. You know, who is anybody to say that? Um, but were we built to be monogamous? I don't know that we were. I don't. I, I look. Don't know there's that we only were. a very few species on the planet that even do this behavior at all. You mean you know, in the animal kingdom? In the animal kingdom. Mm. And so, does that preclude us from being a part of that list? No, 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 not at all. We could possibly be a part of that list. I think the deciding factor should be our history. Have we done that historically? If the answer is no, then we're probably not that. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I mean, in 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 those, in, and I don't know this, maybe somebody can correct me. Please leave it in the comments if I'm wrong. But if for those animal species that do practice monogamy, do they cheat? Or do well, they practice monogamy? Can you think of any? Just I, out of curiosity. This is an interesting little... I, I, I genuinely cannot. But there are some species of like ape and, and um, primate that practice it ish. Huh. Where... There is an alpha male. He does have his harem or his women. And sometimes the woman will skate off into the bushes and there'll be a guy. He'll be like, hey. And she'll be like, yep. And then we'll go right back. And she knows what she's doing because she skates off to do it. And it is what it is. But uh, overall, the hierarchy remains pretty intact. I, when I think about it, it's not quite an animal, but I think of the Black Widow. <laughs> now, right? Now, okay. Now, 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 come let's, on now. For, okay, gonna, let's let me give you a gotta, little bit of. You gotta clear that uh, up because now I'm feeling unsafe. <laughs> I got an insurance policy on myself and everything, and you talking about black widows Prina. and stuff. Prina. <laughs> Prina. Um, but I think about the black widow because, okay, the if you didn't know, the black widow female is a lot larger than the black widow male. Yeah, like, right. Does like, not like, even not even close. It's not even close. But she is very selective on who she picks as her mate. So, and he, you know, they're all, of course, fighting for her to pick them, to pick him. Um, and so, but she's very selective. So she picks her mate, they mate. And then is it that he sacrifices her, his body for her to eat for nourishment of the babies or she kills him because he can't it's it's a bit of both because in order for him to inseminate her this is way too national geographic but basically he has to even do a dance to even because yeah. if he just strolled up she would straight up snack on him that's just the truth that's what's gonna happen but <laughs> let's say she's okay with him coming up then she rears him up like this right and then mm -hmm. he kind of does his little thing in here and from here, he's dealing with a lion that is just going to pounce on him kind of either way because he ain't getting away. So what he generally does is just kind of let himself get eaten at that point. So he knows that that is going to be his yes. only his only mate. Yes. And it would legitimately be his only one because she's eating the, the Cause... crap out of him after. That's just kind of what it so, is. Right. <laughs> it's what it is you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying so, so yeah I, I don't know i don't i, I think it's... there are species that practice that level of monogamy i mean that is a deep level that's of monogamy in it <laughs> that's the ultimate level unless you're doing that our standard for monogamy is too low well if you gotta go you gotta go that's the that best way they want to go how do you die on top of me. <laughs> I'm just well, saying. I'm just saying. That, that, yeah, that's a deep level. Gotta go. Right that there. That. Um, but no, seriously. Um, you know, when you look at the different aspects of, you know, even the animal kingdom, and you know, again, I don't know that you, that is a yes or no question or yes or no answer. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah. 
it definitely makes you think, hmm. Oh, uh, well, you know, there's some theories that say, well, why do men make so much sperm? Yeah, see, that's like, the thing. If it only takes one sperm to impregnate a woman, so why do why do they make so much? They make billions and billions of sperm. Now, and, and probably can, half of them aren't viable, but then that's still billions yeah. of sperm. But on top of that, a woman produces one egg a month one and egg. is born with the amount of eggs she has. Yes. And doesn't know how much that is. Yes. We will never stop. Unless there's a problem, we never stop. It's not... It's not going to stop. That's not how it works. It, 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 when you think of it like that, it's like, wow. Re, you know, what is that? Does that mean that they are allowed to have, but we have to, you know, pick it? No, I'm not, we're not saying that. No, but we're not making any judgment call. No at judgment at call at all. Just but that it, this is nature. This, this is, is how we are built. This is how it. we think about it. What we can't do is run away from that fact right. because then we deny certain basic parts of ourselves that end us up in those places that we didn't see coming. Right. Didn't see coming. You understand what I'm right. saying? We go, we, we say stuff like, oh, well, yes, I love my wife and I, I, I want to be with her always. And then we, we find ourselves hitting these these more animalistic moments. And then you're a guy and you're like, I don't even know how this happened. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm laying next to this other chick and I don't even know how I got here. Mm -hmm. They call that post-nut clarity. I mean, you have no idea. And then after it's like, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, here we go. So... What do you do then? Yeah. Because you didn't necessarily take into consideration that that was a possibility whether you loved your wife or not. So what you needed to do was protect yourself better than that. Nah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. had more of a responsibility than that, sir. Yeah. You can't just, ah, I got it. That's, yeah. You can't do that if you're trying to be honest about your fidelity in your marriage. Yeah. But it looks like we're going to we're gonna have to do a part two. We're already 31 minutes yeah, into this episode. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't anticipate that. I mean, <laughs> infidelity is something that, you know, and, you know, we try to, we try to make light of all of our podcasts. We try to, you know, keep it like, even though we're talking about very serious things. Yeah. But, you know, all jokes aside, we know that this in particular is something, unfortunately, that many of you watching have experienced. And it's not fun. I'm sure it's not, you know, anything that, um, you know, you want to experience or you want anybody close to you to experience if it has, it's affecting you. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think you sometimes do go get in relationships and sometimes it may be natural for you to want to, you know, be interested in other people. So are you willing to have that conversation with your spouse? Hey, you know, uh, I love you, but you it know, happens. It especially happens. With, especially and, I know this is a difficult thing to say it's, and it's, talk about, it's hard. but it, you know, you really have to be honest with yourself. If you know being with the same person for the rest of your life is not something you're trying to do, don't do it. Or at least be honest. Or about be honest be about very, it. Be bluntly honest to the point of hurting feelings if you have to, because if if that person's like, nope, I'm still here, then it, okay, then maybe you can make something work, but. It's through your honesty that that's going to make that difference. And outside of your honesty, you, you, you're you lying. I mean, you're lying to yourself, therefore, and indirectly, you're, you're a significant other, or you're lying about the situation to yourself. Whatever the case may be, you're not doing yourselves any justice. I mean, I agree with you up until the hurt and the feelings part. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is we're dealing with heavy yeah. topics. So sometimes even just saying that truth can be very it could hurtful. Be, it could be hurtful. It I, could I be hear hurtful, what you're saying. You know, yeah. and, and it's not yeah. necessarily something you're trying to do, but if it means that or lying, choose, choose, choose truthfulness. Yeah. Just be absolutely. straight up about it. Because 100%. You could probably just these days because of access, just find your community. Anyway, we're too deep into this we're episode. Too, yeah, we're going to yeah, get to this gotta, part two. We, we have more to discuss about it. We yeah, have more to talk about it. And I, think, I think we have a nice little intro to what we've done so far. And yeah. I think we can really make this part two yeah. pop. So, um, let us know if we're way off base. Let us let know. Let us know what Tell your, your thoughts stories. are. Tell we us your hear. stories. We want to hear. Even if you want to talk to us directly. Yeah. We are available. Um, please like. Please subscribe. Please ring the bell. Mm -hmm. You know how I like to say, do all of the things because we would love to hear from you. <laughs> we want to be. Like we do want you to be a part of our community, and we want to be a part of yours. All right. But until yep. then, remember, we are better together. together. Peace, y'all.